project number one. A quill is, of course, made out of a feather, and to acquire one, I took a little midday field trip to the dilapidated little pond in my neighborhood where a lot of geese hang out and found a few to use for this project. Once returning back home, I needed to clean them, so I grabbed this bread pan and poured in a mixture of half vinegar and half water to soak those feathers in. After waiting an hour or so, you can then take them out and dry them off. Air drying is totally an option, but I just kind of dabbed mine with a towel and removed the rest of the water with a tissue. Once you have your feathers, which you can use from many different birds or synthetic ones, and you've prepped and cleaned them, it is time to actually carve out the tip. You can use a regular kitchen knife or an exacto knife in the first Thing you're going to want to do is scrape off all of the little bits from the end of the feather. Then you're going to want to cut off the initial tip of it before you make this angular cut to kind of slant the beginning. Then you're going to want to carve that out even more so that the longest edge is almost sharp before cutting a slit through that longer end and making it almost come to a point. This is where the ink will kind of come up and then leave the pen once pressure is put on it because the two sides will separate and that is how to make the base pen. Project number two. When researching different things about quills though, I discovered that it is best to write at a 25 degree angle. So on a whim, I decided to make an angled writing desk area. So I grabbed a cardboard box and cut out some pieces for the actual surface, another with a bend in it to connect at the bottom and hold up the back side, and then two of these angle pieces to go on either side to hold it all in place. I think I made mine a bit too steep, but you can do yours at all different levels. I grabbed some hot glue and used a connector piece to to make sure that the front two pieces were actually together and then glued on that angular one with still some space at the top so I could slide my paper in, attaching the angles to the back so that it would stay up properly and the base is done. You could totally leave it plain like this but I wanted to decorate mine a little bit so after evening up the base box and trimming some things down, making it into the shape that I wanted, I grabbed this large piece of paper, cut it so that I could glue it on in the different areas and attached it again with hot glue. You could also use fabric or paper Paint it. I of course could not leave this plain white paper alone though so I grabbed some dirt and plants and made some mud to kind of brush on and age it as well as adding some ferns. My goblin core centered heart instantly went to plants and mud but you could probably make it a bit more dark academic with some paper collages, beads, more intricate painting, anything like that. Project number three. With our quill and our proper writing surface, I of course needed ink, and there are a few different things you can make this out of. Some things you can use are blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, because they're so pigmented. I also have a few other plants in my backyard, like this purple heart and this other one I don't know the name of that I've used and worked out pretty good. You can either steep the plant and then cut it and strain the liquid out, or with the berries, you can crush them up. I remembered that I had a garlic press and that worked really well. And once you have the initial juice of the plant or fruit that you're using, just add a bit of vinegar and a pinch of salt mix that up and then add it to whatever container you choose to use just depends on how much you have and what your preference is i have this little corked container i think worked out really nice for it and i just used a funnel to add the mixture in there for the plants i used the steeping method so tearing off the leaves kind of crumpling them up throwing them in a bowl adding some boiling water letting that sit for a second before using my garlic press or you can just strain it to then add a bit of vinegar and salt and pour into whatever container you'd like all of the inks turned out really well and had some variation in color. I will say that the blueberry one sort of half congealed after the first 24 hours. The rest of the liquid was totally usable, so just keep that in mind. But with that being said, here are the inks. Project number four, a stationary organizer. The base of this project is made out of material, so I grabbed a few scrap pieces from old jeans, a t-shirt, and then this full tank top that I no longer needed, decided on the ladder, and started cutting out my pieces. The size, length, height, thickness of material is all up to you. I made mine just like a general 8x8, I believe it was, and you're going to need two base layers and then a piece that is half the size of the other two. I grabbed an embroidery hoop, floss, and needle, put that hoop on the end, and just did a few simple 
designs on what will be the outside material piece. I did some roses because I just feel like that's the most dark academia flower. So some stems and then kind of just free-handed bits of the flower. If you are doing some sort of design on the outside, make sure you do it to either the far left or right. So when rolled up, you'll actually be able to see it instead of it being covered. But for the inside pieces, I'm going to quickly prep my half piece by sewing on some ribbon and then folding it over and top stitching that to bind that edge before pinning it flat onto the plain inside layer and sew lines from that binding to the base to have little sections to put all of my stationary pieces. Once the two inside pieces are together, I'm going to lay that bad side to bad side with my embroidered piece and just sew all the way around. Once all three pieces are sewn together, I'm going to once again grab that same ribbon that I used to bind off that half piece and I'm going to sew it all along the edges with some excess to the right so then I can, for a second time, fold it over and do another set of stitches to completely bind it off. Unfortunately, with the stretch of my green material and the stiff quality of my ribbon, I did have some bunching issues, but it rolled up just the same, so despite some aesthetic problems, it works perfectly fine. The last thing I needed to do was just cut a bit more ribbon to use as has some tie-up straps, one that I'm going to attach to the left side and then one in the middle back so that they'll be able to connect properly and won't be rolled up in awkward places. So I just hand stitched that down making sure to fold under the raw seam so it doesn't fray, sewed on the two separate pieces, and you're done. Project number five, a letterbox. I figured I should make a project where you could put all of the stuff I showed you how to make previously. So to do so, you're gonna wanna grab a box and follow the main steps of the trunk I made in my original Goblin Core video. Create the size you want with the height of the walls, form the lid to the top of that, either curve it or in this case, make it flat, making sure it matched the top properly, and then also cut out an additional flap to kind of fold over the front. To paint it though, I decided to use spray paint this time because I had such a problem with acrylic paint on the trunk that I made. Even decorative paper or cloth I think could be really nice to line it, but however you choose to paint it, once it's dry you can use some ribbon to go along the edges and create hinges for the different parts of your lid. I did it of course on the back for the main portion and then on the front of the top for the extra flap. Once all three pieces are actually combined though and working properly, you can add the finishing details like a fabric pouch, different areas in the base of the box for certain things, paint designs on the outside, add whatever you actually made the box for, and it's done. Mm -hmm. 